All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at Descartes' rule of signs. We're going to work through one example showing how we can find the possible number of positive real zeros, negative real zeros, and imaginary zeros. All right, so to begin with here, we want to check for our positive real zeros. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to rewrite our function here so that we can clearly mark it up. So I'm going to have an x to the fifth minus that 2x to the fourth minus 3x to the third plus 4x squared minus x minus 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to look for sign changes. All right, now in front of this x to the fifth, it's a positive 1 coefficient right there, so I'm going to think of this as a 1. All right, so I'm going to have a, ch a change in my signs from positive to negative right there going left to right. I will have another one here. I will go from negative to positive. All right, and then there will be one more going from positive to negative. Okay, going from here to here, the sign does not change. It's negative, negative. From here to here, it does not change. It goes from negative to negative. So in other words, I have three sign changes. All right, so let's write three sign changes. Okay, now what you're always going to do is you could have three positive real zeros because that's how many um, sign changes you have. Now, you're always going to subtract two from that number, okay, which is then gonna give me a one. So my other choice would be one, all right? So I'll have three or one positive real zeros. So I'm gonna write three or one positive real zeros. Okay, and we always subtract two right there after we get done for that, okay? Now, we're gonna go through and check for negative real zeros. So, negative real zeros. All right, now, on this one, we're not just going to write down that original function here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in a negative x. All right, so you did this when you tested for symmetry, a lot of other things tested for even and odd. All right, you should be to the place where plugging into a negative x into the function is something that you can do. All right, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a negative x to the fifth power, minus two, plug in a negative x to the fourth power, minus three, plug in negative x to the third power, plus four, plug in that negative x, minus a negative x, and then minus one. Now I'm gonna go through here and simplify it. We know that a negative one raised to an odd power will still give me a negative, so this one will be a negative x to the fifth. A negative raised to the fourth power will make it a positive coefficient. The positive times the negative two in front will leave it a negative two x to the fourth. A negative raised to an odd will make it negative, so this term will be negative times the negative in front turns that to a positive, 3x to the third. A negative raised to an even power, that turns that into positive times the positive in front, means I'll have a positive 4x squared. All right, negative times negative makes it a positive, and then minus one. So when you're checking for negative real zeros, you're gonna first plug a negative x into the function and simplify it out then you're gonna look for your sign changes. Here it goes from negative to negative, nothing. Negative to positive, yes, that's a sign change. Positive to pos positive is not, positive to positive is not, and then this positive to a negative is a sign change. So on this one, I have two sign changes. All right, now again, we're going to take two and then we're going to subtract two, which is just then gonna give us a zero. So our choices are either two negative real zeros or zero negative real zeros. So two or zero negative real zeros. All right, now what you're gonna do for the imaginary zeros, we're gonna construct a little chart, okay? And we are going to have to remember what we've just found here. 
we're going to have to know the degree of the original function. All right, so since it's in standard form, I can just look at that beginning term. Okay, my degree of this original function here is a 5, so I will use this for finding my imaginary zeros. I will use the fact that I found 3 or 1 positive real ones and 2 or 0 negative real ones. Okay, so keeping all of that information in check here, let's write our chart out that is going to be very helpful. So we're going to do a chart for our imaginary zeros. All right, the way I'm going to set up my chart, I'm going to have a column for my positive zeros. I'm going to have a column for my negative zeros. And then I'm going to have my imaginary. Ooh, didn't spell that right. There we go. All right, so we'll make us a little chart here. All right, now, if you recall, we had 3 or 1 positive. So I'm going to put 3 or 1. I'm going to make a row all the way across here. All right, for our negative zeros, we had found that we either had 2 or 0. All right, I also told you that you needed to remember the degree. So the degree from that previous page was a 5. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that degree 5. I'm going to subtract the sum of the positive and negative zeros. So 3 plus 2. All right, 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. So I have 0 possible there. I'm going to take the degree 5, and I'm going to subtract the sum of the positive and negative zeros. So 1 plus 0 there is a 1. 5 minus 1 gives me a 4. So I either have 0 imaginary zeros, or I have 4 imaginary zeros. All right, so this little chart is really handy. You just list after you've found your positive zeros, you've found your negative zeros, all right, and you remember the degree of that original function. All right, then you subtract the degree minus the sum of the positive and negative ones, the degree minus the sum of the positive and negative ones, and that will tell you how many imaginary zeros you have. So pretty straightforward. All right, definitely something that you need to memorize, all right, from a pattern, but once you get it, then this is a relatively simple concept. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please be sure to share with your friends so that they can benefit too. Thanks.